Okay, folks, Dr. Freedom here with the Time Some Doctor News, news from in and around the universe that may or may not drive you nuts like a certain photo that nobody will leave the hell alone that I knew I shouldn't have put onto a video. You all know those, that group of VL photos where the figures are no bigger than this, yet I've got people jumping up and down saying it's this person, this person, and this person. The thing is, and also, by the way, I do know the man's name's Roger Delgado, and yes, I know he died over 40 years ago. But I go, but like I said, if I had a nickel now for every time I've heard that thing because I heard a verbal slip and called him Robert, oh, if they, I'd be a millionaire right now and I could be like PewDiePie. But okay, let's get on to the real news. Let's have a little talk about the aftermath of Ola. <laughs> Pilot overnight viewing figures. That's right, overnight viewing figures. Like the thing is, is this. Um, let's take a look real quick and you'll see what I mean. Or here, you know, before I go crazy. All right, the overnight viewing figure was 4.64 million viewers. And it's going to probably be somewhere between 6.5 and 7 million, you know, with the consolidators come in. But the thing is this, the top show for the night, Britain's Got Talent, didn't even make double digits eight point, at 8.65 million. You know, on the left of the decimal, it didn't make double digits either. Hey, you know, more people are watching things online than they are on television. Hell, Doctor Who was number two on the day, as a matter of fact. Second highest rated show. It beat Pointless Celebrities with 4.34 million. Casualty had 3.48. So, you know, we'll be getting those figures, you know, the consolidated, you know, at the end of this next week. But like I said, do not worry about that. That's about average these days. That, you know, it's a plummet. Oh, my God. No, it's not. Okay, press reaction to <clears throat> the pilot. Okay, Telegraph's Ben Lawrence was pleased. He goes their their relationship, you know, on the pairing of Capaldi and you know Pearl Mackey. Their relationship on the basis of the sensitively, sensitively written episode looks set to be the best since Billy Piper's Rose Tyler and David Tennant's Doctor flirted through time and space over a decade ago. Claire Woodward and The Express had similar thoughts. All right, the first one was The Telegraph. Here's The Express. Showrunner and writer Steve Moffat has pulled off what many thought to be an impossible feat by bringing home such a, you know, much, some much-needed humanity back to the series, a great deal of which comes from the new female companion, Bill Potts, played by Pearl Mackey, who has a really lovely chemistry with Peter Capaldi's doctor. All right. I can't remember the old sod smiling so much. <clears throat> and then they go on and on and on from here. There's only one or two detract detractors, like the Mail on Sunday chose to focus on Bill's sexuality. And, uh, and then, of course, the Guardian article, and I said, you know, it was good, too. Sorry. And then, no, it's not that one. All right. There it is, the male. Doctor's lesbian sidekick in perving storm. Feminist campaigner accuses BBC of girl-to-girl -girl titillation for the benefit of male viewers. <laughs> oh, God. And someone complained when I chew a cough drop on the microphone. That's why. My allergies are pretty bad today, and it's causing my throat to dry up. All right. So. I'd have to say four out of five, you know, uh, you know, on an average, people loved the pilot. I've very, I've seen, you know, just a handful of complainers, one of which lives in a different world from the rest of us. So I'm not truly worried about said so and so sad opinion. Um, <clears throat> also, the fact that the, you know, this also seemed to be a person who couldn't hit the point with a bazooka, and it was the side of a barn. But you, you see what I mean? It's just there's some very close-minded individuals out there who are just focused now on getting attention by stamping their feet and saying, the show sucks. It's going to be so much better when Muffet goes. Blow it out your ass. You're getting your wish. Sit back. Enjoy this season. You're going to get your wish. Chibnall's taking over the following series. And then you can all go, oh, yeah. And then you're going to harp on his sorry butt. It'll be Chibnall screwed up the series. Chibnall did this. Because some people you just can't satisfy. All right, moving on. The first time Lord will be joining Peter Capaldi for the Dr. Christmas special. There's been word of this drifting around for a month or so now. And there's even one saying that it's, you know, the, the first doctor is in the vault. Because for some reason, the first doctor needs protecting. And, you know, we've even got one guy, matter of fact, hang on back over here, who said, get ready for this. John Harwood. Now, the problem is I don't take spoilers from the comment box at face value, especially when it comes from an account that's just basically been created. No picture, no way. Called. And then, of course, when I asked said person 
for, you know, I'll contact you on Skype because I always have my Skype address right there in the description box along with the article links. Sure enough, flat out refused. It's because if I interrogate you, I'll chew holes in your story and I'll make you look like a moron. You see, unless you cooperate with me and give me an idea where you got this information, then maybe, okay, I can say so-and-so said this. But get ready for this. Here's what I know so far. Chris Marshall's the new doctor. Okay, we've had everybody and their grandmother reporting that. Well, even I've been saying that since he took first place in the betting pool a while back. You know, I've been watching three candidates, by the way. Chris Marshall, Richard Rankin, and, uh, well, what's her name? The, the, that one lady from uh, Broadchurch. And uh, Waller Bridge, Phoebe Waller Bridge. Sorry, it took me a minute. See, the brain pan's working. The hard drives that get, you know, it's smoking, but it's working. And those are the three I've been watching at this time. And we'll go more into that later. And if so he's going... <clears throat> there's going to be a temporary female doctor for one episode as a regeneration that goes wrong. And Susan is back and he's claiming that he's made contacts and all that. Like I said, if his data turns out to be true, then look, we'll open a dialogue and then maybe we'll get along and we'll say, look, you know, if you want to become a regular informer, contact me, but you know, until you know, you convince me you're a legitimate source, I'm not going to take a damn thing. You say at face value. That's not the way it works. Like I said, I had a guy tell me once that uh, Jillian Anderson was going to be the Ronnie at the end of Series 5. <laughs> I think even the Mirror said that, and it turned out to be completely false. All right, but back on the track, 11 Easter eggs you might not have noticed in the pilot. Of course, come on, Dirt Obvious, you know, River, you know, the, and of course, you know, Susan, the Sonic Screwdrivers, the Raven, uh, Bust of Beethoven, Bust of Shakespeare, the tower, the, sorry, the blackboard was from uh, Mrs. Quill there from class. The explanation for how the you know, like an interdimensional relationship, you know, the dimensional transcendental, you know, dimensionally transcendentalism, all that whole thing, that was basically explained right here in this little clip. If you want to click on it. Bill may have been writing essays about time travel, and her foster mom was, of course, in gridlock. She was the one who was hooked up with the cat guy and had the litter of kittens that David Tennant found in that one car. That's who that is. So she's no stranger to who. All right, moving on. 12th Doctor, year three. These comics have been out since, I believe, Wednesday. This got put out late. This wasn't put out to like Saturday, so somebody kind of slipped up. But if you want to go take a look at them, you haven't bought this yet, you want to get a little preview of these, you know, 11th Doctor, year uh, three. Sorry. Yeah, 12th Doctor, year three, number one. And you've got 11th Doctor, Year 3, Number 4. If you want to look at a preview of these, all you do is, there you go. Click on it, and it'll pop up. You can take a look at it. You can scroll through them and whatnot. Uh, Torchwood Station Zero, Number 3, also available. So if you want to take a look at those, boom, there you go. Okay, and here's the elephant in the room. There have been multiple, multiple, multiple people jumping up and down saying now that Chris Marshall has been cast in the role of the Doctor for, for you know, following Peter Capaldi. There's even a rumor going around he may even show up before the end of this series, which would be an interesting take if they did a timey-wimey thing and somehow the next incarnation makes an appearance before the actual finishing scenes of Capaldi in the Christmas, you know, in the Christmas episode this year. It would be, would it be kind of weird if he like dies and then an alternate timeline you know, ensues. Then you see his next incarnation in action. Then, boom, things shift back. And then, of course, a few episodes later, Peter Capaldi then dies. Wouldn't that be interesting? Also, we also know there's going to be multi multiple masters. Matter of fact, I'm even hearing from one source, which I cannot name, that we're going to see incarnations of the master possibly before even Delgado's. So, like I said, lots of stuff going on in this series. But as far as the Chris Marshall thing goes, as much as I'd love to jump up and down and say he's got it, in my heart, I'd love to see him have the role. He, I think he's a brilliant actor. I have to stick to my favorite saying in the world, and I want you to recite this with me. You know, you new folks who have just subscribed, this is something the old folks who have been around for a while, you know, they know this one. Are you ready? I should have a bouncing ball, but I'm going to do this video rather quick, so I'm not going to have time to get it done. Are you ready? Don't believe unless you hear it from the bee. Because it could be that this is a massive disinformation campaign to lead you in another direction. Because as I said, I've got three suspects right now. One of which was provided by Connor Farley, and that's Phoebe Waller-Bridge, who is female, but oh my God, she's female. 
and of course, there's Richard Rankin, 34-year-old Glaswegian, and of course, Chris Marshall, who's in his 40s. So once again, don't believe unless you hear it from the beep. As much as I'd love to declare Chris Marshall the winner, I, you know, I'd love to see him in the, in, in the role. I want an official announcement before I go screaming through the hills going, F yeah, F yeah, F yeah, he got it. Okay, well, guys, that's all I got time for today. Um, I've, you know, I, I, I just really want to say thank you to all you new subscribers out there. You know, keep piling on in. Keep telling your friends to pile on in. We've got a long way to go for this series. We got There's going to be Doctor Who's going to be here for the foreseeable future. And I want you to know that your most reliable information is going to come from here. Everything, and also if I do make a mistake, I always account for it. I don't just go, oh, I was misled. You know, I don't do that crap either. I try to fact check as much as possible. I, am, I believe in information with sources I can see, I can touch, I can smell, I can have sex with if necessary, but it better be something tangible. All right. And again, wait a minute. If my wife found out I had sex with my sources. All right. Good night, folks. Have a good